Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. What's up, everyone? What's up, Kuro? Good to see you. How am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. I, uh, I'm still upset about how last stream went, about the drop frames. I haven't gotten any notifications for any drop frames yet, so I'm hoping this goes well. But I hope you're doing well, too. Had another day at school, just one day closer to the weekend. <laughs> a number tier list, yes. I had this idea. I was thinking about it, just, you know, because, you know, my job and everything. I kind of just have to think about numbers on a regular basis. So I wanted to talk about how numbers rank in the most objective way possible. Oh, you woke up early. That's good. It's like, what, 5 a.m. over there? I guess you finally reset your sleep schedule to something where you wake up at a more reasonable hour. Waking up at 5 a.m. is like... It's pretty early, but like, it's a good way to start your day, I feel. I feel like you- it feels like your day is so much longer when you wake up that early. Like when you wake up at like 5, 6, even like 7, it just feels like you have so much of your day ahead of you, cause like, you can get a lot of errands done, you can get a lot of work done, and you just- you just go about your day. And then when everyone else is awake, you're like, I already had a good and fulfilling day, and now I can do other things. You woke up at 340? You love tier lists, they're definitely at least an A on my list tier list. Absolutely, tier lists- Definitely A rank, possible contender for a low S rank. What's up, Leon? Good to see you could stop by. You slept at 11, so you guess your body thought you were having a midday sleep. Yeah, sometimes it's just hard to sleep. I know Wisteria has the same problem where she'll like go to sleep at like 10 or 11 and then wake up at like 3 a.m. and won't be able to fall back asleep. It's... Existence is a wretched thing. Sleeping is very hard. Actually, way harder than anyone would ever think it would be. But, you know, sleeping is what it is. Our body needs it, but then your body tells you, fuck you, you're staying awake. And that really is just how it goes, you know? You can't help it, it's just, you're awake now. Good luck going back to sleep. And, you know, usually I feel that way when I drink, like, caffeine. Like, I'll be able to force myself asleep, but I will not be able to sleep. That's, like, the next hurdle I have to get over. Before, it used to be that if I drank, like, any anything sort of, like, caffeinated, I would not be able to sleep at all. But now, I've gotten good at, like, forcing myself to sleep. But God help me if I wake back up, I will not be able to go back to sleep. Anyway, it would be a bit predictable with this numbers tier list that we have here if I were to start from zero all the way to... from the zero all the way up. Because a lot of the heavy hitters, a lot of the, the big winner numbers in the numbers from zero to 100 are some of the earlier numbers. It's just, it's like priority, you know? You're that early, it's just, it just your, your number is just a winner. So, this number tier list is actually a bit randomized. It starts at 11, and it kind of jumps around. So we're going to rate all these numbers here. There's there's actually, like, specific reasons for a lot of these numbers. Some of them are put into groups, but some of them do have their specific niches. Some of them are a little bit more valuable than others. Can't believe you want to see a number tier list. It's important, you know? Some of the numbers are kind of just very meh. Some are pretty good. So we got to make sure we fit everything here. Ooh, let me make sure I can fit everything here, though. Let me actually adjust this list here. I cut it off at S tier, but there is a, there is a god tier when it comes to numbers. There are like actual like definite like if there was like if we had to ban things from the tiers, if we had to ban things, there would definitely be certain numbers that like are either like banned or like it's mandatory that everyone at least has to use this number because some numbers are just too powerful, you know. But right now we're starting with number eleven. Eleven's pretty interesting. It's a lot of the early prime numbers have their uses because they break down into from a lot of other numbers. But obviously, being a prime number, they can't break down into anything else. So, 11 isn't particularly useful. There's not a lot it goes into. Like, it goes into like 11, 22, 66. And they're aesthetically pleasing numbers, right? The numbers where the same number, the same digit follows itself. It's a pretty cool number to look at. But then you get into like the weird part when you get to triple digits. You get things like 121, 132. The pattern like it's kind of weird. So 11, 11 doesn't get like used for a lot of specific things. It's not particularly like an interesting number. It can't break down a lot. So I'm gonna put 11. It gets the privilege of being one of the earlier numbers. I'm gonna put it in C tier. It's all right, but like when you get there, you know you got a prime number. You, you're very certain that you're done. It's not like one of those numbers that you have to second guess yourself. Like, can I divide out of this number? Is there anything that goes into this? Which I know when I work with students, there's a lot of like the bigger prime numbers that like get a lot of students confused or like there's a lot of the uh the bigger divisible numbers by like say three or five that a lot of students get tripped up on so 11 gets a solid c placement 26 russian bro all numbers are f <laughs> fair 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 if you're someone who hates math all numbers are f except for like the ones that you can count on your fingers 
math never needed to evolve past counting past the numbers that we have on our hands. But I hope you're having a good time, a good day, Russian bro. Glad to see you could stop by. 26, another pretty plain number. It's an even number, so it isn't prime. There's, it can be divided. But again, it's just like, there's not much to do with 26. It doesn't really do anything. And it, it, it's kind of boring how it just breaks down into 13. It does break, it, it, is, it goes evenly into 52, which 52, a notable number use of the number 52 is a standard deck of cards. I like math, don't I? I do teach math, so I have to look at these numbers every day. And when you look at numbers every day, you start seeing trends and patterns and things, and it just it keeps on repeating. And it feels like every every year's the same year. It feels like every number is the same number. It's just all blending together at this point. <laughs> Hope you have a good day, even though you're surrounded by those numbers. We make the best of what we can. I have excuses to not teach recently, because half the school's evacuated and half the school is still in the building. So we got a little bit of a break from the numbers. <laughs> I'm going to put 26 in a solid D tier, though. Just because it's an even number doesn't mean it gets away with being so bland. 13, though. 13 is another prime number, another one of the early primes. But 13 has a lot of, like, historical significance, a lot of, like, superstitious significance. You know, it would be fitting to put it in F tier because everyone associates it with bad luck. But I'm quite fond of the number 13 and its relation to bad luck. I think it's really funny how, like, a lot of hotels and a lot of buildings will skip the 13th floor due to that superstition. And I think for trolling a lot of the human population, I do think that 13 dissolves a solid... I want to say low A or high B for that, you know? It's kind of funny how it just, like, fucks with people. And it just... I don't know. Friday the 13th, that's a cool thing. Like... I don't know. I feel like the superstition surrounding it at least earns it a solid A placement. 30. So 30 is a pretty good number. 30. I respect 30 because it is the typical what we see in a month, right? It's a typical set of the moon phases. Like every 30 days is pretty much the phase of a moon. I think it's actually 28, but 30 is like a month. 13 definitely does get a bad rap. 13, and I'm putting the respect that 13 deserves on the list. It gets a solid A, a placement. It's a prime number, so we can't put it too high up. It doesn't have much use. And even when we consider the multiples of 13, things that 13 multiplies into, there's nothing that really stands out. But 13 historically has some pretty good, pretty good lore. 30, on the other hand, 30 we usually associate with, like, the length of a month, give or take a day. Yeah, give or take a day, because, you know, February exists, so that's where the take a day or two comes from. So 30 is important just in the world sense that most months have around 30 days. It's a very useful number. It breaks into other important numbers that we'll also be placing in higher tiers. Think about how, like, we think about, like, half a minute, 30 seconds... There's other numbers that I believe are used in 30, but I think 30 is a solid B. It's a it's like a stepping stone from a lot of other important numbers, but that number itself isn't isn't the star of the show here. We got 22 here. This number's boring. Kind of like 26. What do you do with 22 aside from divide it from 2? Or like multiply it by 2? Like, there's nothing interesting about this. <laughs> I don't... 22, nah, I, I'm saving F tier for, like, all the really ugly prime numbers. 22 at least can do some stuff. You you get, like, you get 22 of a thing, you can at least split it into two. Then you can, like, or you can split it awkwardly into four, like, with five, five, six, and six. It's, it could be worse. It could be a worse number. It's a solid D tier, though. I think, I think it's a little better than 26, though. I think, just aesthetically, like how I said, like, all the multiples of 11 up to uh, 99, they're all pretty good numbers to look at. But it's just eye candy, you know? 31F. F. Actually, no. There, there are months with 31 days. It's an important number to our to our culture and our society. So that's all it gets, though. Just, just the fact that it's used as a month number, we can put it at 31. Ooh, the next one. This. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a certain set of numbers that are not allowed to be any lower than C tier. And that's, that's the perfect squares. 25 is just such an elegant number. Any perfect square number is just so elegant that it's just the result of a number multiplied by itself. 25 is just very useful in that way. A lot of problems that you'll see end up resulting in things like 25 or 5 squared. Perfect squares are just really nice numbers to look at, in my opinion. I don't think it's an A. Actually, you know what? You know what? No, no. I almost forgot. In our American, God bless America society, 25 is a useful number. Because you think about our coins, right? You got one. You got five cents, you got ten cents, and you got the big mama 25 cents. 25, you got a quarter, 25 cents. It's a very solid number. We're putting that in A tier. It's not as interesting as 30. 
I actually, it, it might be a contender for high B tier. But, oh, so we're tier listing numbers. Welcome, Laika. Yes, we're tier listing numbers. I'm giving actual mathematical reasons as to why I'm tiering these numbers. All right. Then we got 35. I'm very partial, actually, to the multiples of five in general. I think the multiples of five are really interesting for really friendly numbers because, you know, they're very easy to count. They always end in either zero or five. So... Logical increment for coinage, but as a European, it's still weird. Do you not have a 25 cent coin in in European coinage? Does it just go like 1, 5, 10, 50? I feel like quarters make a lot of sense just to break things down into just four pieces. Four pieces seems a lot more flexible than two pieces. We yeah, have 35. 35 is a very solid number, 7 times 5. I'm very partial to these multiples of 5, so I'm going to put 35 into C tier. There's not much that you can do with a 35. You have, you just have one, two, and five. How much is it for like a hole if it goes just from one, two, five? Out of thousands? So you need 200, 200 of those coins to make a full dong? That's, seems like a lot of coinage to carry around. Seems like very much of a hassle to work with. All right, 27 is the next number that we have on the list. And 27 I'm also pretty fond of. If perfect squares are important numbers to think about, perfect tr perfect cubes are not as important. They're not something you see frequently as a student, as someone who works in the mathematical world of the high school math realm, but you do see it every so often. So 27 being the uh, 3 to the 3rd power, I think it deserves a little bit of respect. So we're going to put it low B tier. I think it deserves at least B tier. Ooh, there's 2, 5, 10, 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can make a lot of increments. So like 2, 5, 20 makes sense. 20 makes sense. At least you have 20. Coinage just starts at 100 BND, but you got rid of coins a long time ago. I see, I see. That makes a lot more sense then. No more coins in circulation. Alejandro, welcome. Hope you're having a good day too. You're actually British, so we use pounds, but pounds is the same, but you also have a one pound. I see. So yeah, I mean, I think... If you had to choose between having a 25 cent increment and a 20 cent increment, I think those are both reasonable. I mean, it's one extra coin, but you can make more specific, more... S it's easier to make some of the smaller increments, like 21 cents would only cost to require two coins instead of three coins with the American equivalent. Or things like 40 cents would require less coinage. That kind of stuff. I get it. I think it's, it's reasonable. I think both systems work very well. And I think it's really interesting how, like, different countries decide on sort of how the coins, what increments they want to go in, in between those values. 36, though. 36? Very good number, very good number. It has a lot of different factors. It's a perfect square, so we're going to put it in A tier. And not only is it a perfect square, it also divides into two other perfect squares. Because you have 36, right? 36 is 6 times 6, which I think is pretty, which is solid in itself. But then 36 also breaks down into 4 and 9. So that's going to be 2 times 2 and 3 times 3. Its other factor, one of its other factors pairs, are actually another pair of perfect squares. And that's just, it's just elegant, you know, when you can break down numbers into smaller numbers like that. I'm a big fan of that. You can't speak for Europe, but spoilers for when you get to 12. Our currency used to be based on divisors of 12. Divisors of 12, I actually do hold 12 in high regard. A lot of the very factorable early numbers are all really, really ones I'm a big fan of. 28? So similarly to 30, 28 is just an important number because it's representative in our world of like four weeks, which is pretty much like the cycle of the moon. 28 also has some pretty good factors. It's divided into four and seven. It's a very elegant looking number. We use seven a lot, so being a divisor of seven is a pretty good boon. And just the fact that it's like a calendar week, four weeks, the fact that I can think of a lot of just like how I spend my months in multiples of 28. It's a pretty, pretty solid number. Not, not like A tier material, but I think it does a good job of what it needs to do. 38's really boring. Like a lot of these other numbers here, or like a lot of D tier is gonna be the multiples of two that don't really have much to offer to the table. 29, our first stinker here, our first F, F tier. 29 doesn't do anything for us. Like, yeah, February has 29 days sometimes, I guess, but that's about it. It's not a useful number. There's not much we do with 29. It's, it's like the last number before you ascend into Haghood. It's just... It's just not a great number. There's not much to do with it. 40, you know, multiples of 10. Multiples of 10 are all really solid. 
There's not much to say here. 40, kind of like 30, but 40 doesn't have as much relevance to other things, like how 30 does with like the calendar month. 40 is just a solid number. 4 times 10 breaks into a perfect square. You know, I'm a little biased towards perfect squares, which is also why I'm a little biased towards 32, because that splits into 16 and 2, and 16 is a perfect square. 32 doesn't actually have a lot of other things to provide. I do always like to joke about how the first of every month is actually the 32nd of the previous month. Like when it, uh, when it hit, what was it? November 1st, I was like, what are you talking about? It's October 32nd. I always think about that one, uh, that one meme from a uh, Joshiraku, where they're talking about how, like, it's the 40th of April. And I always think about that whenever it's, whenever we're in the month of, uh, May, we get to, like, May 10th. It's the 40th April. 40 is also a bang. Oh, wait. Yeah, you are right. I'm not going to up it anymore because of that. But it is another solid reason why I should be in B tier. Have any of you guys in the chat ever played Edward 40 Hands? <laughs> it's a very, very, very interesting game. You still can't understand why February only has 28 days. I can't either, honestly. They just decided to shoot one of the months in the, uh, because of the Emperor dude. You mean Caesar? <laughs> but yeah, it was, um,. There's a game called Edward Forty Hands. If you're familiar with the movie Edward Scissorhands, it's the uh, movie where the dude has scissors for hands. I'm pretty sure. I've never actually watched it, but I assume that Edward Scissorhands, as his name implies, that he has scissor hands. But... Oh yeah, Augustus. Augustus Caesar and Julius Caesar. They, they had to neuter some other months. I think they made all the months have more days, actually. I think 36 days. So, because they added two months in, they had to take days from everything. Put four in God tier to the world cry. Yuki, what's up? Welcome, welcome. I actually know what God tier is. There are only going to be two numbers in God tier, because those two numbers are just way more important than everything else. But a lot of the single digit numbers are important too. Important enough that we can't... that these are empty for a reason. <laughs> but yeah, Edward 40 hands is basically when you take two 40s and have someone tape both the 40s to your hands, and you just drink from them for the entire party. It's a fun game. I've played it with not 40s because I just, the beer that I like doesn't come in 40s, so I just got the biggest bottles that I could of them. It's a very, very fun game to play throughout the course of the night. God help you if you need to go to the bathroom, though. <laughs> all right, 45. Like I said, I'm fond of all the multiples of five. 45 is good because, you know, we think about time increments. 45 minutes is a very typical, like, interval of time that we think about. Like, you think about TV shows, a lot of TV shows are around that 45-minute interval mark because they have, like, 15 minutes of commercials, 45, you know, like, 45 minutes. It's that, it, that sweet spot right between half an hour and a full hour. Like, 45 seconds. You don't want to take too short of 30 seconds but too long of a minute. 45 is just very solid. I actually, I'm going to put this at the top of B tier. Actually, no, we're going to put it in the middle of B tier. 33, it's another one of those multiples of 11. We're going to put it in D tier. It looks cool, but that's about it. We usually got 45 minute classes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 45 minute classes. 45 minutes is actually a perfect sweet spot, I feel. Because, you know, 40 minute, I teach 40 minute classes sometimes and I always feel like there's just a little bit more I could do. But if I had that extra five minutes, it would be perfect. I personally am fond of the 60 minute classes, a full hour. Because other classes I teach are 80 minutes long. And the 80 minute long classes, you just lose them after 60 minutes pass. You lose them hell even after like 40 minutes. But you can only give them so much busy work to fill in the other 40 minutes. 80 minute classes are actually hell. 51? 51. We give a special shout out. It's it's actually divisible by 9 at 9? Is it? No, it's not divisible by 9. It's divisible by 3, I believe. 17 times 3. It's a very interesting number in the sense that it has two weird factors. Like, 3 and 17 is such a strange multiple. But also, shout outs to Area 51. We're going to put it at the bottom of C tier. That's about... The, the amount of recognition I could give it. So, yeah, it's... 51's a funny meme number because, you know, remember... Remember two years ago when everyone wanted to invade Area 51? Yeah, I remember how, how well that went. <laughs> Julius Caesar is the one responsible for the basic structure of the calendar. He was a point effects maximus when it was reformed, thus making it the Julian calendar. Augustus had months renamed, but the structure is all on Julius. I see. So fuck that guy. He should have gotten stabbed. As if we haven't heard that joke <laughs> enough times already. Should have gotten stabbed like 12 times. <laughs> Funny meme number. Oh no, don't look at the next number. Oh, thanks for reminding me. 34. We all know this one. We're not going to talk about it. I'm just going to just shove you into... 
for the meme, but like that's about it. It's got the it's got the funny meme. Kanazuki, why is 36 8 here? 36 is 8 here because it has a lot of very, very, very nice factors. I'm very fond personally of perfect squares. Numbers that when you take the square root have a whole number, or just numbers that you can multiply a number by itself to get to that value. 6 times 6 is 36, obviously, but also the factors of 36 are 4 and 9, or another pair of factors are, and those are two other perfect squares, and I think it's really elegant that it could just factor out like that, that another pair of factors of 36 are two other perfect squares. It's just a very elegant looking number to me, in the breakdown of it. 36 is 6, 6 is, and 6 is the best number, so you agree with 36. Fair enough, fair enough. I like seeing why other people would agree or disagree with my reasons. I think I provide very sound reasons. 52 is another number. It breaks down to 26, which also breaks down. We already put that in the D tier. I do like 52 more, because even though it breaks down to a very boring number like 26, it also breaks down to 4 and 13. And if you know anything about the internet, I'm sure saying 413 activates a flight, a fight or flight response, and at least some of you. So it gets points for that, and also a traditional playing card deck has 52 number cards. We're gonna put it in the B tier. And it's got very solid factors. It doesn't have a lot of factors. There's not a lot of numbers that break 52 down, but the numbers that do, I think are very solid, very good numbers. All right, and now, and now, we get to our first god tier number. One. So one is one is absolutely broken. Like if you were doing any sort of math challenge, numbers cards in the standard deck, yeah. I would say that <laughs> the timing. Fifteen is S or God tier. Um, fifteen is pretty solid, but I would probably put fifteen in A tier. Fifteen has a lot of uses as well in our society, and is just another I'm fond of multiples of five as well. I don't think I would put it in S tier because the S tier is actually just there's just such a power gap between the S tier numbers and the A tier numbers that you have to be really powerful to be put into the S tier. One is God tier because, again, one goes into literally every single number here, with the exception of the other God tier number. But one makes you mad because you thought it was prime for ages. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it has good history importance. It has a lot of technical use. Like, there's a lot of different strats that you have to do in mathematics that involve, like, the one. Like, oh, you have two different numbers that have, you have two fractions, that have different denominators, multiply that motherfucker by one. You have two over three and four over five, multiply multiply that first fraction by five over five, the other one by three over three. You multiply both of them by one, but now they're common denominators. That shit's broken. That shit's insane. One just multiplies anything by itself, keeps it the same. It's like, it's so versatile. It's, it being one of the identity function, or one of the numbers for the identity functions, the multiplicative and divisive identity function is just it's broken there's just no reason for this number not to be god tier this number is just, just too powerful like there's some games where like you know you have to ban things because they're just too powerful but there's other things that are like so powerful and so necessary to the meta that like everyone just has to make use of it because it's just that meta defining that's what one is one is just so mandatory there's just it has it's just so consistently in use every number is just a bunch of ones and trench coats exactly 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 that brings me to a number that got brought up earlier 12 12 12 is just a very important number we, that we use here 12 has a lot of important factors as well a lot of simple factors breaks down into 2 and 6 3 and 4 1 and 12 and 1 2 3 and 6 and 4 these are all very 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 applicable numbers to a lot of situations so S, uh, actually, no, this is high, high A tier. It's very important, but I'm still not thinking that it's the S tier. We also have 12 as, you know, the way we tell time. So 12 is important in that sense as well, that our hours go from uh, 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It just has a lot of conventional use in society. We have 12 as the amount of months in a year. There's a lot of uses for 12. Actually, yeah, no, this is a low S tier. This is actually, it's just too functional to not add to the S tier. 37, get the stupid shit out of here. It doesn't do anything cool. It doesn't do anything interesting. It's just 37. It's a prime number. It doesn't do anything for us. Yeah, base 12 is very important, too. Base 12 is important. What is it? The Babylonians use a... Not just base 12, but also 12 and 60 in the counting system. I think that's also very important to consider. 
seven is god tier i am that's actually one of the numbers in the first 10 digits that i was having a little bit of trouble determining whether or not it's s tier or a tier the primes are always really tricky 55 again i like 55 more than i like the other two multiples 11 that come before it it's all right but it, it doesn't do much. Actually, no. By virtue of being a multiple of five, you you at least get bumped to C tier. Multiples of five are homies with me. 39. Actually, no. This is the funny Japanese meme number, so we're gonna go put this. We're gonna put this in like mid C, because if you don't know, 39. <laughs> you can uh, pronounce three as san, and you can pronounce pronounce nine as cute. So a lot of people will joke saying 39, or sankyu. <laughs> It's also Hatsune Miku's number, because Mi, because three can also be counted as red as Mi, and also again Q, so Miku. So yeah, thirty nine. We respect Hatsune Miku here. We respect Hatsune Miku. We 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 respect being thankful for things. So actually, no, we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna besmirch Hatsune Miku's name like that. That actually, as I say this, I want to put this up to at least a high B tier. You're right. You're right. You're right. Actually, we're gonna put an A tier. Hatsune Miku's important. Thank you. Ooh, 64? Like, this number, this number, this is an ace number here. This is a solid... We gotta pay respect to the Nintendo 64 here. It's another perfect square. It just breaks down into a lot of other numbers really well. It's 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th power. I say it should be due to its cultural significance more than any math-related thing. Lucky number 3 is at least 8 here. Oh, 3 is more than 8 here. <laughs> Three is a very important number. We can't we can't sleep on three. But 64, 64 is just very important. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Also, welcome, Phantom Phoenix. Glad to see you could stop by. 41, very meh. Very unimpressive number. I think it gets higher than 37, but not as... It's like, the F tier could just be in any order, and it wouldn't really matter. These are all just really meh numbers. You get to these numbers, and you just get a little disappointed. 67, again... Very boring number. It's kind of cool that it's like two consecutive numbers, so I'll put it. I'll put it at F for that. But it just 67 doesn't stand out to me. Relevant case to improve 22 in my eyes. The number of major arcana. You are right. The tarot is 78, and then the major arcana has 22, and the um, minor arcana has 56. Those are important numbers. So I could at least. You're right. You could. We could use that argument. The uh, the uh, occult representation of 22. I'll give it at least a low C for that one. 42? I know a lot of us are on the internet. And it would be... It would just not be right for me to put 42 anywhere other than the A tier. We're gonna put it under 64. It's not as great as the Nintendo 64, but the meaning of life, the universe, and everything... I've never read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy or watched it, but I know 42 just has a very big cultural significance to just like pop culture and also like the internet 42 is important i'm not gonna sleep on 42 it also breaks down into six and seven pretty decent factors but like other than that there's not much else interesting i guess it also breaks down into three and 14 uh, they're all right numbers they're all right pairs but it really is just that cultural significance of the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy that that boosts 42 all the way up here you used to not be able to like go anywhere on an internet forum without someone in their signature referencing LUE and the number 42. Alright, 72. 72 breaks down to 36. It's related to 36, but also 72 is just kind of just big and unwieldy for not being able to do much else. It's also a multiple of 9, which is alright. So we can just put this in like a solid, like, low C tier. Uh, actually, we'll put it here. Fun fact 42 fact 42 is the only known value that is the number of sets of four distinct positive integers A, B, C, D each less than the value of itself, such that AB minus CD, AC minus BD, and AD minus BC are each multiples of the value. Huh, I didn't actually know that fact. So wait, that's why Adam's chosen. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So that AB minus CD, AC. I would need to think about what those values are. You say eight should be an S here as it's the highest strength set that Lin- <laughs> Kazuki. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, not like this. Don't do poor Lin dirty like that. That feels so bad. <laughs> That's lucky, though. I don't think I've ever seen a Lin with higher than, like, 5 strength. <laughs> 43? So close to being 42, but you're just such a... And it's also close to being 44. Like, it's... 
it's close to two very cool numbers, but unfortunately it's just too mundane to do anything else. Is this 78? Yeah, I think this is 78 down here. So 78 for Arcana reasons as well. We can put that in C tier. It's another number multiple of two. It's, it's divisible by two, so it does stuff. But it doesn't do anything interesting aside from be a part of the major arcana. So like, I'll put it here. Not as interesting as rule 34. But it's fine. It, it does what it does. Now 44. This is the funny death number twice. Shishi. -shi. Or I guess, I guess if you were to count in Japanese, it would be... Uh, yon ju yon. <laughs> but 44. I like two fours. It's one of the cooler multiples of 11. So I'll put it in B tier for being death twice. Second fun Adam fact is the ultimate answer. The ultimate answer is 42, but the ultimate question, which is, what is six times nine? <laughs> yeah, I never did read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but I have heard that he's a bit of a cheeky person. What? You thought the question was a secret? <laughs> was it? I. He's just leaking secrets from the Hitchhiker's Guide? Uh, did they reveal it? I, I wouldn't know. I guess Leon would know. All right, 80. 80 is a pretty solid number. Again, it's divisible by a lot of things. You know, 1, one in 80, 2 in 40, and then 4 and 20, 4 and 20, 5 and 16, and then 8 and 10. It's got a good amount of divisors, but it's kind of at a point where it's a little bit too clunky to do a lot of work with. It's very versatile, but not versatile enough. 5 in God Tier Astrosia is good enough to bring the number up on its own. No, 5 is God Tier for its own reasons, actually, Kanazuki. Oh, they made a sequel called The Restaurant at the End of the Universe? I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about that. I only ever hear people talk about The Hitchhiker's Guide. Alright, 47. I feel like 47 has some relevance to something. But until I can remember it, you're going straight into F tier. Not interesting. Not great. 81's pretty cool. I'm a fan of 81 because it's not only is it 9 squared, but it's also 3 to the 4th power. It's got two pretty cool perfect numbers working in line with it. So, at the very least, by being useful in that sense, you can give 81 a solid low B tier placement. It's versatile, it does what it needs to do. It gets it's a perfect square. Perfect squares are always just solid numbers to look at. Everyone always has their like squares memorized. It's just it's useful. 48. So, 48's in this interesting limbo because, you know, we think about multiples of 12, right? 24 hours, that's an important number. 12, the number of months in a year, the number of hours in an AM or PM cycle. Then you have like 36, we already put an 8 here. 48 in this like sort of weird limbo, because all the multiples of 12 are really, really, really solid numbers, but 48 doesn't really have too many uses. For the multiples of 12 up until 60, I would probably say it's the weakest link, but it still is very factorable, it still is very divisible, so we're going to put it in probably, let's say, 20... Middle of B tier, it's it's a pretty good number, but not the best number. 85 is a multiple of 5. These things these things are just guaranteed to at least be okay. So we're going to put 85. The bigger multiples of 5 just... It's just, once you get past the 10th multiple of 5, it's alright. 48 hours isn't uncommon, but it definitely isn't higher than B. Exactly, exactly. Like, 48 hours we think about, like... I've done, like, 48 hour marathons, like, of charity streams, where... We run for two days in a row, because, you know, two days is, like, a very good in-between. Like, you can set up, set aside a weekend and get a lot of people together to do stuff for that amount of time. F two days, not a bad cycle of time. But it doesn't stand out as much as the other intervals of 12 do. Now, 49. 49 is the lucky number 7 squared. So, 7 is obviously, like, a very solid number. Has a lot of lucky significance to it that we can't ignore. So, that number squared already has to be at least somewhat good. It's a perfect square, and it's a perfect square of the lucky number. But, there's... The thing about it is that it's the only factors, and it's not a particularly useful number, right? Like, when it comes to 25, 25 is a perfect square of another prime number, but 25 is just very useful. 49 isn't as useful, so we're gonna put it, again, around here. A solid perfect square, but all it gets... All it has to its name is that it is a perfect square. 93, I mean... Okay. You're fucking with me at this point. What do you do? You're divisible by 3 and that's about it. Wow, you divide into 31. Back indeed here with you, you go. Right next to your buddy. 
50, 50 is a very, very, very solid number. You know, half of 100, very divisible, divided into 1, from 1 to 5 to 10, 25. Bunch of very useful numbers in their own right. So 50, I think, deserves a solid, a solid 8 here, low 8 here. We have a lot of uses for it. 50 cents is a very common price point for a lot of things. Let's see, I'm trying to think. Just being half of 100 is nothing to slouch at. It's, it pulls its own weight in counting competitions and just using numbers in general. We use 50 a lot. Like, $50 is a very solid, like, price point. So, I think that's a pretty good point. A, a pretty solid placement, just low A. 96. 96 is another number. It's another factor of 12, and these 12 factors just have so many divisors inherently. It's hard to, like, rank it low, because, like, you know... You, you can divide 2, 3, 4, even 6 goes into 96. Let's see, 6 goes into it, 8 even goes into it. It's just, it's so versatile. I have no reason not to put 96 high. I have, I place a lot of values on a number being factorable, because, like, when a number is factorable and you have that much of a number, it's just so much easier, so much less of a headache to, like, break it down to groups, you know? Like, say you have, like, what, 29 of an object? The fuck? You're gonna... You, how are you gonna make this equal? How are you gonna make this even? How are you gonna split apart your 29 chocolates amongst, like, three friends? It's gonna be a pain in the ass. You can't do anything with this. It just sits there, and it's like a rock. It's like... It's like when you get junk items that you can't throw out in a video game. It just sits in your inventory. You're not gonna do anything with these dumb prime numbers. These... It's just like... That's like the tear gap, you know? The more factors a number has, it just, it's inherent powerfulness. Other numbers that are prime numbers that are up here are like odd numbers. They get to be up here because of like lore reasons. Like, they're carried by like, being an unlucky number or being a quarter of a hundred. It's a very useful thing. But these guys just don't do anything. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Next up we have number two. So two is also very important. It covers about like half the matchups in the game, you know? Every number either is or isn't divisible by 2. And that's 50%. So it's not as impactful as 1. 2 being like an even number, 2 being every other, being dividable by every other number is very important, very, very big. It's probably one of the most important n numbers behind the god tier. But it still doesn't have the power that you need to get into god tier. It's like, I could probably make like, a tier in between god tier and s tier like maybe like an ss tier that like maybe two and possibly three would be in but that's about it they're just so powerful but i don't think they deserve their own tier i think i think they survive on the merit of just being the top of s tier all right 14 14 is a pretty good number you know it is a fortnite number one victory royale yeah fortnite we about to get down get down but um it's like in the same niche as 28, it just, it's related to days of the week, in the sense that it's a span of time, a span of amount of weeks, but aside from that, it's just, it doesn't do much aside from that representation. It's even less versatile than 28, so I feel more inclined to do, oh god, did my tier list just die? Oh, thank god it saved. I would have. I would have cried if the entire tier list just shut down. Oh, uh, please. 14 is the best because you were born on the 14th. See, there's some numerical biases there. Like, I could say that the, um, the 17th would be the best number because I was born on the 17th. But, uh, then I would be a filthy liar because that's a gross prime number and it's not that great. But we are going to put this at the end of B tier. It's alright. It has its important uses. God. I'm glad that Tier Maker actually does, like, save itself very periodically, so I don't have to worry about that. That would have been very bad. <laughs> 53 is another prime number. Icky prime number. I think it's even worse than a lot of these. I think it's better than 41. 97. It's a nostalgic year to me, but I can't let the bias of nostalgia, simply because I was alive during this time, cloud my judgment. 97 doesn't do much. It's, it's another prime number. It looks kind of cool, like it reminds me of getting an A-plus in school. We'll put it in like the middle of F tier, it's just not anything great. It just doesn't deserve to break out of that tier. 54 on the other hand, we got a multiple of 9 and 4 here. 54 is just an alright even number. It's better than a lot of these like numbers in D tier, 
So I would say that it probably deserves to at least be at the top of D tier. Also, we got to mention that 49 propaganda. 49 is a very important gym. Every 49 you... Ooh, I didn't know that, actually. That is important lore. I think... Even still, though, 28 and 30 being also important time numbers... Ooh. I think it deserves... I think it's still being at the top of B tier is pretty respectful. Oh, 54 is how many cards in the deck with the Joker. That is true. Hmm. I think I, I will keep it at low C tier, then. I think that's a, that's a reasonable spot. 99? I feel like 99 is just universally a very common number to see. Like, you play a lot of video games, a lot of stats cap out at 99, levels cap out at 99. It's divisible by 11, it's divisible by 9, it's divisible by 3. It's got a lot of good divisors here. Level 9, like, seeing things hit 99 in video games is a, such a satisfying thing. I think we're going to put that at A rank, or A tier. I think it deserves an A tier for that. 56. Eh. It's another... It, you divide it, turns into 28, which is cool in itself, I guess, but also, 28's fancy, 56 seems like it's trying to bite. I don't necessarily move these based on the facts, I just like numbers. <laughs> 99 cent store seems cheaper than a dollar store. You're right. When something says 99 cents, my monkey brain is way more inclined to get it than when I see something priced at something with zero cents following it. 56 is definitely a D tier number, though. Like, you go to, like, a you go to a store, you see a game for, like, $59.99 compared to $60 on the dot. $59.99 just looks more enticing because it's still, like, it's still in the 50s, right? It just, it just seems like a safer number. But 100, very malleable number, very no modifiable number. Our culture, like, a lot of cultures use this, like, counting up from 0 to 100, like, dollar bills, you know, um... Just being a base 10 perfect square has a lot of different factors. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10. I think that's actually it. But still, all of its factors are very, very, very easy to work with numbers. 1, 2, 5, 10. Working with 10s is easy because you just add 1 to the digit past the 1's digit. 5 is just 5, 10, 15, 20. Very easy numbers to count. 2, obviously, is just every other number. There's no reason for this not to be S here. 56 is the sum of consecutive primes, which is nice. It's the sum of... What is it? Oh, yeah, it's the sum of... 23 and 29? No. Is it? No, that would be 52. I forget what the consecutive primes were for that one. 29 and 31? No, that would be 60. Yeah, I don't... I think it's a nice fact, but I think it's still, like, not as interesting... Oh, 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 it's the sum of multiple consecutive primes, I see. It's it's like one of those like cute things, you know? It does that, but I think it's still like... I feel like all these other numbers are more notable. 57 is a very interesting divisor of 3, 19 times 3. It's... that's about it, you know? 19 in and of itself is kind of a boring number because it's just another prime number, but we can put that somewhere in the D tier. I don't think it's as interesting as 56. 56 is definitely a little... Outclassing 57 just by... Just by a smidge. Multiple. Not just two. Definitely still low tier. Exactly, exactly. 50... I feel like these 50s... Just don't do it for me. Okay, this is a... Some product of 29 times 2. Yeah, whatever, buddy. Okay. You're barely not a prime number. Get over yourself. You're saving grace. You're saved. You're carried by the 2. The 2 carries so much numbers. Like, half of these numbers would be F tier numbers if we took out the 2 from them, quite literally. I'm pretty sure, like, 58 divided by 2 is 29. <laughs> and then, let's see, 38 divided by 2. We didn't put 17 here, but 17 also gets down in that low tier. 59, so close to being a champion of a number, but you just don't do anything. Just don't do it for me. We're going to actually put you in low F tier. 59 is just half of these numbers. <laughs> exactly. The difference between a D-tier number and an F-tier number is that the D-tier numbers, for the most part, are divisible by something. <laughs> Wait, where did... How did 31 end up here? Did I... Oh, yeah, I just said that it has relationships to month, but that's about it. 60. Now, 60. That's an important number. 60, you think about time. We have, we have 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. You think about the ancient Babylonians. The ancient Babylonians actually counted by using a base 60 system. 
by using the knuckles on the, their hands, on their fingers. So if you like hold your hand out in front of you, you use your pinky, your ring finger, your index finger, and your middle finger, there's 12 notches in total. And you have five fingers on the other hand, so 12 times five is 60. 60 is just very versatile with its factors, because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, and 10, and 12, and 15 as its factors. It's just got such a huge pool of factors relative to its size that it just is very versatile. There's a lot of different ways we can split up 60, and I think it's historical reasons and just the fact that we still use 60 regularly is just not something that we can ever understate. It definitely is one of the higher S rank numbers. This is so on brand. Welcome TSC Claw. I'm glad you think it's on brand. I This is important to me. It's important. We have to know which numbers are good and which numbers are bad. Obviously, like, there's some clear winners like 1 and 2. But like 60 and 100, these are important. 64? There is no reason to gloss over 64. 61, though? This number sucks ass. What are you going to do with the 61? <laughs> You're here to learn. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. 62, again. What does this number do? You can divide it by 2 to get 31, but that's about it. You go in the same tier as your friend, but you can be a little higher. I don't even think you're as interesting as those other numbers here. 63? You know, if we're putting 34 up in this tier, I think 63 deserves to be right next to 63. Or 34 and 63. Similar reasons why they should be next to each other. I think... I think it's the same sort of internet meme culture. You hope you understand you mean nothing but praise when I say this is honestly one of the most interesting things. It is. It's a very big departure from the usual things that I do. And I'm actually happy to see that I haven't dropped any frames. I wonder what happened yes, on Monday that I couldn't stream. But I'm glad that it just is not blowing up on me today. All right. So for someone was like, oh god, I please hope the number four is an S tier. You'd be right. Number four is an S tier number. It's not only a perfect square, but it just a lot of these small numbers just... <laughs> but your stream lagged as you said that. God damn it! I did... An, an ad did start playing, so it might have sounded like lag there. But... God damn it! <laughs> I didn't drop any frames though, so that's... That's that's the good thing. So 4 just has a lot of significance culturally and just in general. You know, 4 like being the number for death. 4 just being a very small number to work with. Dividing things into four is easy. Um, four being a perfect square is important. Four just multiplies into a lot of different numbers. Four is very versatile, so we might as well just like keep it there in the S tier. It's not as important as the other numbers, but it has its important uses. Same with a lot of the other single digits, a lot of these numbers here. Four is also interesting because it's just, for being such a low number, it still is a number that can break down. Oh, it did buffer. Sometimes, sometimes bad internet curses us all. 15. 15 definitely goes into a solid A tier. Just because, again, things with time, things with dates, and that kind of stuff, 15 minutes is a very common interval of time that we use. It breaks down to another multiple of 5, and multiples of 5 are always just aesthetically pleasing. And then, what else? I'm trying to think. 15 days is kind of like almost two weeks, but again, it's not as major. But still, 15 minutes being an important interval of time is sort of what secures it here in this A tier. Actually, I think I might put it a little lower, though. It is an important number. It is a multiple of 5, so it does have reason to stay up here with the other heavy hitters. But I think it just can't offer as much as the others above it, but it's still better than the numbers below it. Then we got 65 here. 65 is just a, another multiple of 5, very solid. It's a multiple of 13 as well, 5 times 13. Two numbers I'm particularly fond of. So I think we can at least give it a C tier. It, it doesn't do anything aside from just be a multiple of two numbers that I like. But by being in the multiple of 5, you're, you're, you're alright in my book. You're A-OK. -okay. Alright. 66. Again, you know, Route 66 is an important route on the American country goes from all the way from the right side of the country to the left side of the country. That's always important. It's also another one of those multiples of 11. But aside from that, you can't really do much with 66. What, you got 6 times 11, you got... Eh, actually, you can do a fair amount with it. 2 and 33, 3 and 22, 
it's got some uses. I think I'm going to put it actually low B tier for that. It's got some historical significance with the big root. It's got a good amount of factors. I think it being in B tier is a very solid placement. Similar to 80, it's just kind of unwieldy because it doesn't have as many factors as 60 does for being a bigger number. So it's sort of that ratio, you know? The bigger a number gets, you have you better make sure you have a lot of fucking factors to make up for it. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? Anyway, 68, again, divisible by 2, divisible by 4. It's got some good divisors, but it's just it just is a number that just feels like it is there. <laughs> yeah, that's... That's... I don't think I need to explain that one. <laughs> Wait, why did my... Oh, I just realized, because this tier list is expanding, I actually need to adjust it. 66 is a numeric way of writing... All oh, that is interesting as well. I did not know of that religious significance. Damn. This tier list getting kind of chunky. There we go. We've resized it. <laughs> okay. So next we have 70. Uh, I like... Again, it's a multiple of five, so at least get C tier at the very least. But I like, it's just not one of the interesting ones, you know? Once we get past like 60, it's like, what are, what are you here for? What do you do? What is your use, 70? You can go around 85. You're like, you're pretty divisible actually. So I'll actually put you up around here. Finally using your comparative religion study. <laughs> Who knew that it would be useful in a VTuber stream? <laughs> Cause we got like what? we got. 10 and 7, we got 2 and 35, we got 5 and 14. It's a fair amount of good factors, but like, I don't know, 7 is just a very inelegant number to me. I, I, I just don't personally vibe with 70. It is another, ooh, what's the religious significance of that? I know like 7 has had some significance, but I don't think I recall where 70 comes into play. Not quite 7 level, but still, yeah, yeah. It is related to 7, so that makes sense. 71? Go into your little hole there. 73? I mean, it's again, it's just these prime numbers, like, we're really digging at the bottom of the barrel for this now. Like, what am I gonna do with some of these numbers? There's just some of them just aren't usable, right? It's just it's like a struggle to figure out like what to do with some of these guys. Alright, let me. We're getting we're getting to the point where we're using up a lot of screen space for these. Alright. I just realized I'm cutting off the S tier. Oh, who would have thought that a, a tier list using all the numbers from 1 to 100 would get really big? So there are quorums of 70 and periods of 70 days. And forgiveness of not 70, but 70 times 7. I see, I see, I see. That makes sense. That makes sense. 70 no, just normally coming alongside 70. I see. So yeah, I think, I think it being in the C tier is a perfectly justifiable position for it. 74, I mean, again, another divisor of two. It's, it's about all it can do for us. We're going to put it in D tier. I feel like I'm forgetting an important 74, though. But, again, 74, you divide that by two, you just get two 37s. Two stupid gross prime numbers. See? Your buddy right over here. You don't do anything for us, so we're just going to keep you there. 75, though. 75 is a pretty solid number. If we think that 25 and seven and 50 are good, obviously the next quarter increment is also a pretty solid number. You know, we got 3 and 25, we got 5 and 20, or 5, 3 times 25 is there, we got 5 times 15. It's just, it has some, it has a very nice prime factorization breakdown, 5 times 5 times 3. So, I'm pretty fond of this, I think. It gets a low B tier for that. It doesn't do much else aside from be carried by 25, 50, and 100, all of which are in a higher tier placement because 25, 50, and 100 are very versatile. 75, on the other hand, is kind of like an intermediary where it's related to the numbers, but it doesn't do much else aside from be that stepping stone. <laughs> now, this is an LARUOK -okay moment. Reyna, you don't understand. When I got deep fried by my internet the other day, I was too scared to do any other kind of stream. So we're, we're just talking about numbers right now, and I think we're making a pretty coherent list. I don't think it's an unreasonable list. I think if I posted this to the internet, people would be like, yeah, Elliot's right. Yeah, this tier list makes a lot of sense. I, I agree with his position to say that 97 is a dog shit number. <laughs> 
77. Lucky number seven times two, or lucky number seven paired with itself twice. Yeah, it's a pretty solid number. It looks good. I got it. So you are not okay. Understood. Thank you, Reyna. I hope you're doing well, though. We're gonna put 77 definitely in the B tier, similar to 44. It's like, you know, 44 double death, 77 double luck. It's just, it's a very nice number to look at, aesthetically pleasing. Like, I placed a good amount of the, uh, the multiples 11 in C tier because they are nice to look at. Like, 11 kind of carries them by virtue of that, but aside from that, it's just, it's just kind of cool, you know? Now, 5? Five. 5 is definitely up there in the S tier. 5 just is such a solid number. Every multiple of 5 is very nice, very predictable, and when you have that familiarity there, when you know what to expect, it just feels nice. Anytime you look at a number that ends in a 0 or a 5, you know your homie 5 can bail you out. Kind of like whenever you look at an even number, you know 2 can bail you out. Hope your internet issues will be resolved soon. I hope so, too. They, um, we were supposed to get called by the, uh, by the company to, uh, what was it? To get a new node for our router? Because what I was using was, like, a node that sort of extends the range of the connection. And when we were, it used an Ethernet cable, so it pretty much felt like we were running on Ethernet. But, uh, it stopped picking up our signal when we got a new router, so that's getting replaced. And hopefully, I'll be able to stream properly. But we didn't drop any frames to stream, so I feel a little bit braver about streaming again. <laughs> 77, not very high up in Judaism or Christianity, but extremely significant. I see, I see. Is it for similar reasons to what you were talking about with the, um, what was it? The periods of quorum? Oh, Arya, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the raid. I hope your stream went well. I think, oh, what were you guys doing? What were you guys up to? I hope everything went well. Right now, I apparently am not okay, according to uh, Reyna. We're currently tiering all the numbers from 1 to 100. Or a 0 to 100. Gamer numbers! <laughs> but thank you. I hope you're doing well. Um, We're definitely more than at least halfway through. And I think I have a pretty cohesive list so far. Like, there's like... We could rename these tiers. Like, F tier could just be shitty prime numbers. But people can figure that out on their own. <laughs> D is like numbers that divide into prime numbers and do nothing else. Oh, you were playing Monster Rancher. That's what it was. That was That's what it was. Were you having fun, uh... I, don't, I remember that you could put your own discs into that game to, like, get new monsters. Were you were you taking advantage of that mechanic? I remember I played Monster Rancher when I visited, like, a friend in the Philippines for a while, or for, like, a good week or two. And that game was, like, very interesting. I thought the disc mechanic was very cool. Oh, I see. So that's what makes 77 important. It came up as a concept in Muhammad's teaching of faith. It's always interesting. It's always interesting to see, like... How numbers are important in different religions or different cultures. You can only Google song in the Switch port. Oh, okay, so you would have to have like the ISO file to actually import discs on like emulator. It's so fun though, the monsters are insanely fucked up. Actually, one of my, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Yaru Gado, she was uh, playing Monster Rancher, I think the Switch version, and they were able to like import discs. And I just asked to be like a Fire Emblem OST, and I was like, Swayzo, like the the eyeball with like the big tentacle except really hairy like that's what my monster ended up being so i was like almost upset but also like hairy eyeball just sounds absolutely horrifying as a concept anyway number 16 let's talk about numbers because that's what we were doing before the raid and that is what we will continue to do i hate Swayzo. he's got a funny face he's got a funny mouth and a big eye and now just imagine him with hair all over him <laughs> 16 is absolutely an A-tier number. 16 isn't as good as 64, even though it goes into it, but it's a perfect square, you know? The, the square root of 16 is 4, 4 times 4 goes into it, 2 times 8 goes into it. It breaks down into a lot of solid numbers, but I feel like I don't see 16 used a lot in other things, aside from just being a very, a very easy number to multiply in and out of. The age where loads of places think it's okay for kids to join the military. It's the legal age of or it's the age of driving in a lot of different states. It's also the legal age to drink in a lot of European countries. I actually always thought that it was interesting how places in Europe made it legal to drink before it's legal to drive because then like you get all the booze out of your system when you're before you're actually able to get behind the wheel and then once you've experienced that enough you're like, "Ha shit, I shouldn't operate a vehicle 
while I feel this way. It's a good thing I was able to drink before I was able to drive. And then here it's just, you can drive, also don't drink. Honestly, I'm dumb because it... <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Arya? You're so fucking valid. <laughs> We're looking at this from a mathematical standpoint, but also... <laughs> there was that. There was putting 42 and 8 here. We've got some meme numbers in pretty solid locations. 34 and 63. They're... They're meme numbers, but they don't have the raw energy that some of the other meme numbers do. But we're only going, we're only going from a uh, zero to 100, because otherwise we'd be here all goddamn day. 78 is the number of cards in a deck of tarot cards, and as someone who reads tarot a lot, I am partial to it. So we're gonna put this, we're gonna call it the higher end of the middle of C tier. It does, it's a pretty decent enough number. It also divides into 39, which. We already said it was 8 here for the uh, weeaboo memes, and to respect Hatsune Miku. So, 78 is definitely solid in its own right. 69, you're all right. You are correct. 69 also, like, turned it sideways. It looks like one of those Homestuck symbols. 69 divided by 3 turns into 33, which also is a, Or not... 63... Or 69 divided by 3 is 33, right? No. 23. God damn, I teach math. Why did I get that wrong? Holy shit. <laughs> Am I wrong? I would rotate this. I would rotate this counterclockwise if I could, but that's just the cancer symbol. So, uh, it's a solid number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I meant by the homesuck symbol, Reyna. <laughs> that's what I meant. 79. I mean, you're, you're kind of just there. Like, 79 is just a prime number that, I mean, put this fucker in F tier. We're, we don't need, we don't need more prime numbers clouding my beautiful, elegant space of nicely factorable numbers. 82 splits into 41. 82, aside from that, doesn't do anything else for us. So we're going to put this, it's just not interesting as a number. It just doesn't do anything for us. Seven, seven, nine is before <laughs> six, seven, seven. <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. Reyna just saved 79. <laughs> Reyna just boosted it up to the top of F tier for that joke. A snapshot of calm before the storm. Before 6... Before 789. Was 79. <laughs> before 6... Feared everything in the world. Before every, Before there was disturbance in the, in the numerical society. 83, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I don't... It gets me so mad. Every time I see a prime number that's that big, you have no right to not be dividable. 84 turns into 42, which 42 is a godlike number. So 84, uh, we can just put this in C tier. Like, the numbers that are related to pretty good numbers, but aren't good numbers themselves. We can just keep them in the, like, a couple tiers below, because they don't do anything else. 83, but it looks like, <laughs> it looks like the cat face, but it has goggles. Scientist cat face actually does also boost that up. You can't just point that out to me, Reyna. You can't point that out to me because you are right. You're very correct. And I'm upset about that, that I didn't think about that. Your brain is too big. <laughs> Your brain Uh. Now we're getting too big to actually fit on the screen. Holy moly. This tier list is getting way too big for its britches. Just because the god tier is too big. God damn. 86 turns into 43. You don't do much else aside from that. You're actually even worse than 83. 83 actually wins because it's a cat face. We're going to put that at the top of D tier. It's kind of a winner because of that. 87. It's divisible by 3, I guess. You divide 87 by 3, you get 29. But what the fuck else do you do after that? Nothing. Nothing. 88. I mean, it looks cool. Divisible by a lot of numbers. I'm going to put you... Mathematically, you work pretty well, so I'll I'll put you at the bottom of C tier. 90 is also another pretty solid number. 90, you think about, like, a three-month span. 90, you think about a minute and a half, 90 seconds. Like, you know, when you want to when you wanna heat something up in the microwave, but you don't want to destroy it. 90 just... It's it's all right. It, 88 does have pretty good symmetry. You are right there. You can flip it upside down, and it looks the same. Oh, it is double pachi. We'll put Double Pachi at the top of C tier, actually. 
90 is just very versatile. Not as versatile as 60, because again, 90's factors are 1, 2, 3, 5, 9, and 10. And then, what is it? It's going to be 30, 20, 45. It's, the factors of 90 are so spread out compared to the factors of 60 that it starts being a little clunky, but it does work out. It does have a lot of good factors, but it's not as useful regularly as like 60 is. So we're going to put it at the bottom of B tier for that. 91, it's like you're so close to being a good number, but you just fall flat. Now 6, 6 is S tier because it just it's such a good team player. It works with 2, it works with 3. It's, it's a very versatile single digit number. And it just goes into so many things. Like it goes into 60, which is another winner. It goes into 12, which is a good number. 6, 6 did retreat, which is why it's at the bottom of S tier. Actually, we should put... Yeah, 69 is only carried by the meme factor, mostly. So a lot of these other single digits are going to just be behind there. 17. I mean, you had a cool Sound of Music song, I guess, but that's about it. You're a prime number, but, like, you're not one of the big, clunky, unwieldy prime numbers. So I will put you at the top bottom of D tier. You're saved from being in the shitty prime number category, 17. 92. Divisible by a lot of things. Divisible by 4. Divisible by 2. 92 divided by- that's the Dancing Queen. You are right. Dancing Queen, peel the meat off the tangerine. Oh yeah. <laughs> 92 is all right. 92, I mess with you, but not like C tier mess with you. You're not even as cool as a cat face, so I'm just gonna put you right there. 94, also similar case. You're only divisible by two, and then when you divide by two, you turn into 47. And 47, we already said, is down here. So again, it's just a case of even number that only divides into two and a prime number it just there's not much of a saving grace here 95 though we got windows 95 very iconic operating system so 95 you get to stay up in the seat here divisible by five again all the divisors of five get a free pass to at least seat here we're not we're not gonna dock them anything below that it's always guaranteed oh kotomi <laughs> welcome welcome thank you for the raid what were you guys how are you guys doing? Let me actually shout both the raiders out. Aria Eternity. Forgot to shout her Aria out earlier. And let's shout out... Quote. Snacks. What were you guys up to? I think you were streaming more Yakuza, right? Yakuza 0? I hope your stream went well. I still need to beat Yakuza 0 myself. I only got up to, I think, chapter 4 or 5, but... I did play all of Yakuza Kiwami, and I just love the characters in the Yakuza universe. I hope you enjoyed, though. I hope you got pretty far. I know you've been playing it for a bit. So I hope <laughs> you were clapping some decent darts. Oh my god, I feel like... I feel like those darts minigames always take me more than just a couple of tries to get right. Because otherwise... Like... I don't know. I feel like I just can't aim at video games. Which is why I've never played like a shooting game on stream aside from Doom. Games where I have to aim... It's like a recipe for disaster. I just cannot hit things to save my life. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for the raid. I hope I hope it went well. I hope you clapped dudes both in fights and in darts. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Elliot Ambers. And usually I'm playing strategy games like Fire Emblem. But I've been having a little bit of internet troubles recently. Though the stream seems to be going very fine, so I'm happy about that. Today we're doing something a little different, where we are currently tiering every single number between 0 to 100. You can see what kind of hellscape atrocity I have created so far. And I think we're at the home stretch. If we scroll down, we actually only have about 15 numbers left. So you can see, like the god tier, the god tier number is 1. 1 just goes into literally every number here. There's no reason for 1 not to be god tier. Similarly, 2 is god tier because it goes into pretty much every other number here. It goes into half the numbers, and that's a very respectable feat. Five gets to be up here because, you know, multiples of five are super chill. You know, you multiply something by five, you know what you're getting into. You get a number that ends in a five or zero, and it's just, it's comforting, you know, that you don't have to think too hard. <laughs> Where is nine? We haven't gotten to nine yet. Nine's important, though. Nine's right here. Well, tier nine. Nine actually gets to be up here. It's... It's a very versatile number, being a perfect square. You know, 3 to the 2nd power, 3 times 3 is 9. And perfect squares are very elegant. And it's just... That's really the whole thing. And just 
nine, all these early numbers just go into a lot of these other numbers. So being the being these single digit numbers are a lot of the factors of everything else. It makes them very versatile. Pretty much all the numbers that you can count on two fingers deserve to be in this S rank spot. Pretty much anything that you can count on your two fingers. <laughs> like a dream come true. <laughs> it's you are right. We have to pay our respects to Cerno as well, or Cherno, Chudino. <laughs> I play Doho. <laughs> it is the strongest number. But these numbers here just all have some sort of important significance in our daily lives that, like, I gotta pay respects to these numbers. Nine is good, four is good, six is good. These are all solid numbers that you can easily divide out of most of these numbers. 98, we had Windows 98. It's a very important operating system. When you divide 98 by 2, you get 49. And that's a perfect square as well. So those numbers, very elegant numbers. We can keep it in the C tier. There's not much relevance to 98 beyond, like, you know, being part of a pretty solid operating system and being related to a perfect square. You see, I have, I'm very partial towards perfect squares. 49 is up there, 36, 4, 9, where else, 81. These all get high placements because perfect, perfect squares are just elegant to look at. Windows 8 is mid. I prefer the Millennium Edition. Isn't the Millennium Edition pretty much, oh no, that's Windows 2000. You're right, you're right. I do think that, like, it wasn't until, like, I feel like from, like, Windows 98 up until, like, Windows XP, like, no one, I feel, really, like, shat on operating systems until Windows Vista came out. And Vista came out, and everyone was like, ew, this operating system stinks. Yuck. What is this? Welcome, Sora. This is a tier list where I am ranking all the numbers from 0 to 100. I have a degree in mathematics, so you can tell that all of this is objective fact. And this is like certified correct. So you can trust me on this one. I know which numbers are and aren't high tier and low tier. Seven, for instance, automatic S tier. It's the lucky number. It it doesn't see as much use in terms of like factoring out, in terms of pulling things out. But for being seven, being that traditional lucky number, it just a lot of people rely on it for luck, you know? It and by virtue of being a lucky number as opposed to an unlucky number. Seven gets to stay in that S tier, you know? You play jack, you play slots, you want that lucky sevens. It's just, it's just, it's just a solid number. Everyone, like, almost anyone that you ask what their lucky number is, a lot of people will say seven. So, I'm not going to disrespect seven. Twenty is a very solid number. It divides into one, two, four, five, ten. So, it's got a lot of very solid divisors here, but I don't think twenty really does anything important specifically like notably like I can't <laughs> seven is powerful in terms of being a factor of anything luck based you're right 720 is 721 a luck based number I don't remember oh can't piss seven off <laughs> seven did eat nine so that's why <laughs> that's why we have the that's why seven's in front of it you know it's that like that power it's like nine would be higher if seven didn't hard counter nine you know like when you're playing a tier list like sometimes a character has to be put below another one just because of the hard counter so, like, it'd be good, but, like, not the best. A blackjack. Oh, you're right, blackjack. You gotta get to 21. Hit me. Sir, you're at 25. Hit me. Sir. <laughs> 20 is a good, very good number. A very easy number to work with. So I'm gonna put it in low beat here. 8. Again, a lot of these single-digit numbers are just really imbalanced. They just factor into everything. 8's really interesting because... Being a single digit number that already has two other single digit factors. Very elegant. It's two to the third power. It's a very good number. Actually, we're gonna just do that. The Asian lucky number. You're right. It's also one singular Pachi. <laughs> 21. Another solid number. The blackjack number. 21. That's three sevens. Very cool. Seven, seven, seven. Seven plus seven plus seven. We're going to give this one some respect here. We're going to put it around here. Past 48, I think that's a good placement. 23. Get this fucking prime number out. Get this shit. No one wants 23. 23, you're a low prime number, so you can be, like, all right. But I guess. But no. It, it, you just stay there. You just stay in your hole. Don't come out of it. You're an F tier. 10, again, very good number. Did you see that weird 23 number? <laughs> this man's still going. Yes, it has been. It has been an hour, Kuro. We're almost done. Did I watch that? 
I don't think I watched 23. I did watch 21, I think it was called, which was the Blackjack movie, where, pe where they talked about counting cards in order to uh, scam a uh, casino. 10 is absolutely S tier. 10 is absolutely S tier. It just... Base 10 is just such an important numerical system. We use it to this day. I actually think 10 goes past 60 because we use we use base 10 regularly. We don't use base 60 regularly. We use it for time and that's about it. And 60 is, don't get me wrong, 60 being as factorable as it is is really good, but 10 just has that power, you know? Just the powers of 10 is just so easily digestible for us. We have 10 fingers on our hands, so that's our counting system. And then we have 24 here. All right, so dramatic line reaching. The ninja copy possible. You're gonna have to copy paste that back. Oh wait, I can just scroll down here. Are you talking about, if I scroll down, don't see it. Or maybe the phrase, the phrase it's just a game. Oh wait, can you copy and paste that into? <laughs> can you copy and paste that into the chat? <laughs> it's synonymous with the Japanese word for heaven. Oh, it is, you're right, 10. <laughs> Like, we really buckled down since standardization by... We did! Once we... Once, like, a society was like, Yeah, base 10 kind of fucks. Every other society was like, Yeah, let's use base 10. That's a pretty solid system. But yeah, just get me the copy pasta and I will read that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it looks like we won't be able to see the upcoming numbers. So if we just scroll up and down. 24. Now, 24 is a very solid number because, you know, 24 hours in a day... Very solid number. We have 24 is divisible by 8 and 3. Very good divisors. Also divisible by 12. So, like I said, a lot of the divisors of 12 up to 60 are all very solid numbers in their own right. So I'm gonna put 24 right below 64. Oh fuck, that made a second that made another line. I have to zoom out a little bit. Ugh. Let's zoom out a little bit here. So we can see the entire tier list. Goodness. The ad is peeking through, though. All right. Base 10 does kind of fuck. I feel like it does a little more than just kind of fuck, though. It's very, it's very phenomenal. Like, you try learning other base counting systems, you try le learning hexadecimal, your head starts spinning. Why the fuck are there letters here? Or just, like, even just, like, writing, like, 1 and then 16 in the next slot. It shit just looks too confusing. It's just awful to look at. Octal isn't too bad to look at either, but it just... When you're so used to base 10, I feel like learning any other base number system is just a pain. Base 6, please. Don't make me don't make me count in hexa, please. Alright. So we said that 1 is a god tier number, and I said that there was one other number that goes into the god tier. It's 0. If 1 is broken for what it does, how versatile it is, 0 is also in that same place here. 0 and 1 are both identity operators. 1 being an identity for multiplication and division, 0 being an identity for addition and subtraction. When you add or subtract something by 0, it's just straight up the same thing. It's an important thing to know for like the identity purpose. Anything plus or minus 0 is the same thing. 0 isn't even a number. You're right, it's arguable that it is a value, but we have that. We have 0 divided by anything being 0. It's got a lot of power behind that. It can destroy the universe if you try to divide by it. Yeah, but 0 favor wouldn't be a good identity. <laughs> Well, that's why Faber, if it was zero Faber, that would be zero times Faber. You would actually instantly disappear. One Faber is the identity by multiplication because you don't, because when you attach one to anything without putting an operator there, it's implied it's multiplication. So you're using the multiplication identity, which is one. All is nothing compared to zero. Zero turns everything to nothing and nothing always surrounds you, you know? You close your eye, you look at the dark, all of that is just zero. <laughs> Also, did your ninja tweet not send? I don't see it. It doesn't look like it even, like... It doesn't look like it sent in my screen chat. It doesn't look like it sent in, um... You could just DM it to me on Discord, actually. I have it that open as well. So you could DM it, DM it to me there, and I will read it out loud. <laughs> but yeah, Zero just has a lot of unique purposes. <laughs> I am in the middle of carrying a League of Legends game, about to close it out. And my brawless wife brings me a sandwich, not asked for, with chips, as I get a double kill bot lane. So how is your day going? <laughs> Did Ninja play League of Legends? It's just, it's such a strange thing to read, like Ninja and League of Legends, because I always think about him as with Fortnite. 
What the fuck? You don't think you can buy dive balls in BDSP? 69 the goat, welcome, Yushikun. Welcome, glad to see you agree with 69's placement. It's not as versatile as every other number above it, but it's 69, so I have to respect it. <laughs> three, also just very good number, very solid number. Two, three, five. Three really covers a lot of the bases that two doesn't cover. And when they overlap, oh boy, is it a treat when you're factoring things out. When you can factor something out that has a six in it, it's it's just a very fun number to factor out. It's always a treat, you know? You factor things out, two you always expect, but when you see that three there as a surprise, like especially when you don't know what to divide by because you're working with an odd number, three is really good. Comedy comes in three, so you can believe it. Yeah, you know what they say, three's company. It's a solid number. <laughs> it's also a crowd. Depends on the room you're in. 89. You're a prime number. The, the F tier is mostly interchangeable for most part. <laughs> three is the best and you can't change my mind. I don't know. I'm more partial to zero, one, two. These, like, this is a solid, like, top tier and high tier placement, I think. I, I, it would be, you'd be really hard pressed for me to change this top tier here. All right, 46. They put a crown on this, but, like, it's just such a boring number. 23 is already in the F tier, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right there. So, 46 doesn't... You're saved by being an even number. That's about it. 18's a pretty solid number. 19... 19 and 17, they're just like the lower prime numbers, so I don't hate them, though, that much. 18 is pretty good, though. 18, you know, like, you must be 18 years or older. R18 artwork. Ooh, that's the, that's the magic age that I didn't wait for, because, you know, you can always just lie on the internet. But, um, it's divisible by 6, divisible by 3, divisible by 9. Got a lot of fun, it's got a fun sequence of d factors. So I'm gonna put that in a low B tier. So here we go. Here's my tier list. <laughs> Zero is a Chuni goat, though. You are right. Zero is such a Chunibio number. It's just, we are returned to nothing. And then you just say some edgy word that has zero in its move because saying nothing and saying zero just sounds so cool when you're 10 years old. <laughs> when you're Chunibio. So obviously, the god tier numbers are 0 and 1. They're way more versatile than anything else on this list. But then we have 2 and 3 because they just go into a lot of things. 69 isn't god tier because it's the funny meme number, but mathematically it's a lot harder to use. It's very factorable, but not even as factorable as the other numbers in the tier that are in there for their size. But it is funny meme number. I didn't even have to com I had to give commentary for that one. I just slid it up there. Give a little chuckle. <laughs> But welcome, Roosevelt. Good to see you here as well. We got 2, 3, 5, 10. 60 for the amount of minutes in a day. Or minutes in an hour. It's good. 12. It's alright. It's very factorable. It, 12 just goes into 60, which is important. And it has like 2, 3, and 4 as factors. They're all solid numbers. A lot of the single digit numbers are here because they just deserve to be there. And then 69. <laughs> 69. And 100, obviously, because 100... 10 squared is just a very, very, very easy number to work with. Well, there's power in zero. It reduces anything multiplied against it to zero. Well, of course it does. That's the le most lethal of mathematics. That's pretty cool, actually. Destroyer of numbers. I already wreck every robot I study. Why not basic arithmetic? <laughs> the courier and Dr. Zero. That was, I didn't even realize that was a fallout quote until I just finished reading that. <laughs> but here we go. There's like some pretty common trends in this list here. F tier is pretty much every single prime number that I think sucks ass. D tier is mostly even numbers that m divide into prime numbers, or numbers I just don't think are very interesting. C tiers usually have some kind of like impact or are a multiple of five, which multiples of five got the pass to go into C tier higher. Like some important numbers like 88 being a very pretty number to look at, 34 for rule 34, 63, rule 63. 22 is just a funny number to look at, and also a Taylor Swift song. So, solid numbers like that. B tier usually have a little bit more significance than that. Perfect square is what got to go in here. 66 was there for its cultural significance on the American landscape. And other numbers that just had nice factors. A tier are all numbers that not only are factorable, but usually have some kind of relevance. Like thinking about the Nintendo 64, thinking about how many hours are in a day. 16 is just a nice number to look at. Unlucky number 13, the meaning of the universe, 39 is a Hatsune Miku number. They're all, they all have their reasons to be up there. 
You get like 10 times the amount of girlfriends you do. <laughs> well, 0 times 10 is still 0. Gotcha. <laughs> Someone looked at a black hole, decided to make it a number. A 0. 38 is the number... Ooh, actually, that is pretty important. That does let me put it like right below cat face. 83 was a prime number, but it also looked like a cat face, so that's why it got to be high D tier. So these, I think this is a pretty... I think this is a pretty cohesive tier list. I don't think anyone could disagree with my placements. I think my mathematics degree means that I am right, and anyone who agree argues with me uh, needs to go the fuck back to school unless they also have a math degree. This is my absolute word in law. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure what else... I feel like I had other ideas for tier lists, but I'm gonna close this out. Do you guys have any other suggestions of tier lists? I think I could do one more. I don't want to spend, like... I don't want to go too expansive. This was a fucking 100. This is 100 different options. Fun patterns in your tier list. 2, 3, 5, and 7, 8, 9. Thank you for your wisdom. I'm glad you were able to learn something today. I'm glad you could take in my take in my wisdom. Love to be dictated to. Right? Isn't that the best? <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you think so. Let me see if I can find one. I had another idea in mind for a um, a tier list, but I want to see. I didn't actually check tier maker to see if this idea was in it. So let's see. Let's see. Great tier list, great stream, many thanks. I'm not done just yet. I want to see. There was an idea that I had for malls. I mean, for tier lists that has to do with malls, because I was just thinking about how, you know, you you ever just like get sent to the mall as a kid and like you just have to think about like where do I want to go when they let me go walk around the mall you know so let's see if I can actually do this oh ooh, a fruit tier list actually that is that is actually a very solid one fruit fruit tier list let's see fruit plus Asian fruit let me just see make sure I know Okay, some of them I would need to try. Let me see. Fruit plus Asian fruit. How does this tier list look? Uh, let's do the absolute fruit, 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 fruit tier list. Okay. And I will, I will preface this now, saying that there are a lot of fruit that I am allergic to, but that will not influence my decision because I will still eat a fucking, I will still eat fruit that will make my mouth explode because it tastes good. You know, it's like, I remember hearing this story once about a kid in, like, an elementary school. Alright, <laughs> thank you for stopping by, though, Leon. I hope, I'm glad you enjoyed the number stream, and I hope you have a good rest. So let me just organize it like this. That's a good size for tier list. Ooh, Malf, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the raid. We, uh, we just finished doing the numbers tier list. Let me actually pull that up so for those of you who missed it <laughs> unknown spirit oh and thank you for the follow uh gelsol let me shout you out Melf. Mel. Yes, uh. what were you guys up to what were you guys up to before streaming oh you're playing omori that's a game that i've been meaning to actually get back and finishing because i tried playing it and then i forgot to save at some point and then I lost like an hour and a half of progress and then I just didn't want to continue it again. You never realized numbers needed a tier list. Oh, everything needs a tier list. And I think I have a pretty definitive list for uh, what got ranked high and low. Numbers like one, like all the S tiers have a commonality that they're all either single digit numbers or numbers that are very factorable or they're 69. Zero and one are God tier because they're just way more useful than every other number below it. The A tier were all perfect squares, or numbers with big historical significance, like 13 as an unlucky number, 25 being a quarter, 39 being the Hatsune Miku number, being Sankyu in Japanese. <laughs> I had a month-long break from Omori. Oh, it's always hard for me to like get back into RPGs after I take a long break from them, but I hope everything went well. <laughs> I hope you were able to make good progress. And. The F tier was pretty much all, like, really bad, awful prime numbers. Just numbers that are absolutely rancid, give off the worst vibes. Very disgusting numbers, I hate them. Every time I see them, I actually reel, reel backwards. My knowledge of numbers is fascinating. I am a math teacher, and you teach math, so this is my forte. 
What I say is actually law. <laughs> of course, I don't think anyone would disagree with me for my placements. So I think I'm pretty safe. I don't think anyone's gonna get my ass for this one. <laughs> but we were about to start one other tier list. A shorter one, because that tier list actually legitimately took me about 90 minutes to do, because it was 100 different things. This one should be a little shorter. We're gonna talk about fruits. So fruits. The first one is an apple. You know, I'm a teacher. Teachers love apples, apparently. I'm deathly allergic, not deathly allergic, but like really allergic to apples. I went apple picking at some point in time and my face started breaking out. Like my lips started inflating. So like, I hate when that happens to me, but like when I could eat apples, they're a very solid B tier. They're also very versatile. Like apple pie, I love apple pie. I can still eat baked and cooked apples. It's just, I think it's something with the skin of the apples that like makes me react. It's like a good fruit flavor. It's like what I think about when I think about fruit. So I think a solid B tier is good. I think this is an apricot. And it's stone fruit. The pit's there. It tastes all right. But like, out of all the stone fruit, apricot is definitely like the weakest link to me compared to all the other stone fruit. Avocado. Avocado is just such a good fruit to go on like most things. Guacamole is delicious. Avocado is an S tier fruit. Just because of how many recipes it can be used in, how many, how applicable it is to like all foods, that it's just, it's the utility. It's like, like when you rate like characters in games, like on tiers, like sometimes characters get S tier because like they're just naturally like good on their own. But avocado gets it because it's just such a powerful support fruit, you know? Bananas, bananas are so handy. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me to take a, skip, a sip, Eshetan. <laughs> Bananas, very good fruit to grab and go. Elliot confirmed millennial. Look, avocados just taste good. The flavor of a banana leaves a bit to be desired, but again, it's utility in the fact that you can just grab and go. You can leave a banana peel. You can put it on the ground to trip up your opponents. It's got a lot of uses, but the flavor is just not as good. I love the flavor of avocado, despite like it being so useful. Bananas are just all right. Blackberries. If avocados are there for being like the support class, blackberries are top tier just because they're just naturally overpowered. Blueberries are also good, but they're, the taste isn't as good as a blackberry. Blackberries, it's just like a million explosions happening in your mouth at once. It's just such a perfect fruit. Cantaloupe. Out of all the melons, I think cantaloupe is kind of just like the most boring one. It has like this flavor that I can't put my finger on it, but it's like... You show me a spread with, like, cantaloupe, watermelon, and honeydew. I am probably going to eat the cantaloupe first because I want to save the better food for last. Cherries. <laughs> I have a pretty funny story about cherries. I don't dislike cherries, but I'm allergic to stone fruit in general. I think I would put them above apples, actually. I remember one time, a friend of mine, a coworker of mine, had cherries that they brought to work, you know? It, sometimes you just bring fruit to work, right? And he offered a cherry to my other coworker, and that coworker just bites into the cherry, and we hear the loudest, most deafening <laughs> sound. And like we all just like pause and look at our coworker in shock. And all he says was, "Huh? Is there a nut in this? Like what the fuck? You are twenty." You're like 25 years old, and you've never eaten a cherry in your life, or don't understand at the very least that there's a goddamn pit in it? Like, what the fuck are your teeth made out of that you make a crunch that loud, and your first thought is, oh, there's a nut in there. Not, oh, this is like a plum, or like any other fucking fruit that has a pit? <laughs> Ooh, I love black cherry soda. Black cherry is a good flavor. Are these? This is in the sea, this... Are they, oh, these are... No, they're not golden berries. This is an alphabetical order, so it's... Cran... No, this is, these aren't cranberries. I, I don't think I know what these are. I think my brain might be... Might be a little soft. Coconuts. Coconut flavor is so good. I, um... Actually, actually... No, this goes... This goes here. So... I visited the Philippines once. Many, many... Actually, not many years ago. Maybe, like, five years ago. And I don't know how many of you guys know about Filipino, like, desserts or treats, but there's this thing called a uh, Halo Halo, where it's basically just, like, you, it's, like, shaved ice and, like, a bunch of different weird shit in, like, 
cut condensed milk. It's like shaved ice, condensed milk, and a bunch of like soft jellies all mixed together. There's like red bean in it. There's like ice cream in it. There's a lot of things. And if you go to like any like Filipino restaurant, they usually serve halo halo as a dessert that you can buy. It's very good. And it's usually just like, you know, served in a cup. I visited the Philippines and there was just this roadside stand that sold what they called buko halo, which was just a big fucking coconut. The coconut was opened up and the halo halo was inside the coconut. So you have this giant coconut with the coconut milk still inside and just eating out of a coconut was such a satisfying experience. I I need to chase the high of having buko halo once more. It was so goddamn good. <laughs> But, like, where the fuck do you go anywhere that isn't where you get that, lo like, natively? Like, I'd have to go to another island country or go back to the Philippines to experience that once more. And that's just sad. Cranberries? Eh. I mean... I don't hate them. Like, they're not something you can eat on their own. And, I mean, cranberry juice is alright. It's a very good mixer, I will say. It makes for a very good mixer. But that's about it. Like... You won't catch me sitting in front of, like, a bowl of cranberries and see, golly gee fucking whiz, I could sure go for a cranberry right now. No, I'm leaving that for some poor sap to eat. Someone else to, like, eat, and then they just go like, whoa, a sour. <laughs> so yeah, cranberries, very good juice, very good flavoring, but just the fruit itself is just nothing to write home about. These are, these look like raisins, but... If this is in the D section, I don't know what these are. This isn't... I see durian. It's gotta be something that starts with a D and a letter before R. What is this? I don't think I know what that is. Dragon fruit? Dragon fruit's interesting. Wisteria will tell me that it doesn't taste like anything, but I feel like I enjoy the taste of dragon fruit. Oh, they're dates! I haven't had... I can't remember if I've had a date, so I'm not going to put that there. Also, I don't think guys welcome to Europe. Thank you for stopping by, uh, Lusubai Cat. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day as well. I like dragon fruits. I actually think I like dragon fruits more than these other fruit. It's, I don't know, I feel like the uh, the very subtle taste of dragon fruit is very nice. Durian, F tier. People will always be like, no, it just smells bad, but it actually tastes really good. Shut the hell up. Durian does not taste good. You cannot convince me otherwise. This is, I don't know what that is. It's... <laughs> you... Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the follow as well. This is grapefruit. Grapefruit is one of those things that it's like... I like grapefruit-flavored things sometimes, but even then I can't guarantee it. And I just can't vibe with the grapefruit. I don't think it's as, as offensive as a durian. But I just cannot do... Oh, it's passion fruit. Never had... I, I like passion... Oh, it's a fig. Oh, it's a fig. Yeah, I've never had a fig. So that's a grapefruit. These are... Oh, these are grapes. Grapes, pretty good. Very easy. Just, you know, you just fucking throw that shit under the sink. Just plop the branch of grapes on your plate and just go ham. Guava. I don't think I've had enough guava to form an opinion on it. Honeydew. Honeydew is probably my second favorite melon. It definitely goes into a solid low A tier. Good honeydew. It's just a very satisfying experience. I don't know what this is. It's like a spiked fruit. I'm not sure what it is. Kiwi. I love kiwi. Deathly allergic to it. I keep on saying deathly allergic as if I am, but like, I'm only kind of allergic to it. Kiwi, very good taste, but like, I don't know. Something about it, like, there's something about the aftertaste that makes it feel like I'm going, I feel like I'm going through TV static or something. <laughs> Kuro, I've, I've had I've had durian so many times. I want to like durian, but I just can't. Lemons, lemons are very good. Lemons are very good for like seasoning like food and drinks and stuff. But aside from that, that's about all they're good for. I like that I can season stuff with them. Same with lime. Like you put a lemon or a lime in a beer, it enhances the flavor significantly. So you guys get to be in B tier just because of that. The flavor they enhance is just really important. Lychee, instant S tier. Lychee's so goddamn good. Mango, instant S tier. Oh, I know what this is. I forget what this is called. But this is also good. I had this in the Philippines. And just... It is a very satisfying fruit to eat. 
We're gonna put this in low A tier. I forget what this fruit is called though. If someone, if someone else also well versed in fruitology can help me, I can't remember what it's called. But these should be good. This is a. It's an orange. Yeah, this is definitely an orange, and oranges also just go into low A tier. Low A tier because I like oranges and orange juice is good. But eating an orange compared to eating a lot of other fruit is kind of a pain. I feel like my hands always get really, really, really sticky with these compared to other fruits. And I don't know, it doesn't beat out the taste of everything in the S tier. This is a papaya. Papaya is alright. Um... My family used to have papaya around a lot. I like it more than cantaloupes. I like it more than these. I'm gonna put it in a... I think it's better than bananas. Papaya's pretty good. And then, this I've never had. A peach. Peaches are delicious. You get the right peach, and just the explosion in your mouth is just incredible. Pears. They're like better or worse apples depending on the time of day. So I'm going to put it alongside an apple. Pineapples. All my men in the chat, we got to eat our we got to eat more pineapples, you know. Pineapples very important to eat. Important for your diet and also they taste pretty good. Pretty good pizza topping. Don't kill me. <laughs> we put this here. I don't no, this is a plum. Plum I actually like more than peaches, personally. Then we have the pomegranate. Pomegranate? I love the flavor of pomegranate, so I would put an S tier. And normally I don't like docking points off because of the unwieldiness to, uh... Because of its unwieldiness in regards to, like, preparing. But when you want to eat a pomegranate, you have to, like, set aside, like, a fucking, like, 10 to 20 minutes to get that motherfucker ready. So because of that, you go under peaches and plums. You are so unwieldy, but goddamn if you don't taste amazing. Raspberries, pretty good. I'm gonna put them above oranges. They're not like my favorite, but I would never be against eating them. Okay, the next one is star fruit. And I have like this memory of when I was seven years old and remember really liking star fruit. But then I had it again when I was older and it kind of felt like a C tier fruit. So we're just gonna keep it in C tier. And then strawberries. Strawberries, y'all know it. We all love it. Strawberries are just crazy. Watermelon. There we go. Head to bed. Thank you for stopping by. I think we're actually going to start wrapping up now, too, as well. I don't want to go too long with this. That <laughs> The number tier list really took a lot out of my mind. But here we go. Strawberries? Of course strawberries got to be an S tier. So this is my fruit tier list, you know? Durian is the only fruit that I just do not like. That... I've had, and I'm just like, I would rather not have this again. Everything else, I'll eat, but they're just like, the D tier is stuff that like, I could take or leave. C tier is like, things that have like, good fruit flavoring, like, cranberry flavored stuff, apricot flavored stuff, star fruit. These all like, the flavor is good. Or actually, these, this was just mid. I think I could put cranberry in low B tier. There we go. B tier is things that like, I like the flavor, but like, it doesn't stand out to me. Or I like the flavor, but like eating it on its own is like just not the wave. Like limes and lemons, eh, it's just whatever. And then these are all fruit that like I, I absolutely love the flavor of. And S tier, it's like these are the best fruits in the world. So that's my fruit tier list. But I think we've had a pretty solid stream. I enjoyed being able to talk about my favorite numbers. I, I like being able to tell you guys what the best numbers are, my objective opinion, and going through some fruits, thinking about it, actually has me a little hungry. And I'm glad that the stream actually did not drop a single frame. Like, I don't know what was up with yesterday or two days ago, why like the stream was just so bad. Maybe I'll try streaming some more games tomorrow and see if, if I get more dropped frames. We'll see how that goes. But thank you guys all for stopping by. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of your night, and we'll go and find someone to raid now. Let's see who's online who we can pay a visit to. Let's see, twitch.tv. Thank you for stopping by, Kuro. <laughs> Alright, so let's go and pay a visit to... Let's go and... Thank you, thank you, and thank you for stopping by, Rosebell. Let's go and raid. Let's go to an art stream. Let's go and pay a visit to Purity. I've lurked in her streams before, but I haven't actually 
watch her all too much, but let's go and read Purity Valentine. And again, thank you guys all for stopping by. I hope you guys have a great, great, great rest of your night. And for now, class is dismissed.